Hi, I'm Eric Lam from the Microsoft Enterprise Cybersecurity Group. Today I'm speaking to you from the Microsoft Cybersecurity Center in Singapore. I will be sharing with you some concepts and ideas around threat detection and this forms a very essential part of every organization's cybersecurity strategy. Today, it is not uncommon for us to hear cybersecurity incidents uh, being announced in the newspapers or online. And every day, such incidents are increasing in volume. They are impacting financial services, government agencies all across the world and even in Asia. And some of these incidents, especially those in critical infrastructure, could have potentially devastating impact on the nations that they are happening in. So very, very clearly, this is extremely important for all organizations to take serious consideration. I will be looking at some techniques and strategies whereby organizations can be better prepared to detect such threats and to be able to quickly respond to them and limit the amount of damage that can happen. Fundamental to effective detection is threat intelligence. Threat intelligence refers to the information that comes from all the security systems that an organization deploys to keep it safe. In general, the more threat intelligence and the more information you have and you are able to analyze gives you a higher probability of detecting a compromise or an attack. So basically, the more threat intelligence, the better. But there are some challenges around this as well. Firstly, threats are increasing in volume and complexity. Secondly, threat intelligence is complicated and is also fairly expensive. And the last challenge is that you can't just rely on technology. You also need human expertise. The ever-increasing volume of threats is becoming a big challenge for organizations. As the threats increase, the amount of information that you need in order to prevent and detect such threats also increases as well. And because of the huge volume of information and intelligence that has to be acquired, a lot of organizations struggle. Secondly, threat intelligence is extremely expensive. Right? If you get intelligence from some of the dedicated security companies, it could cost a lot of money. And this poses a big challenge in particular for smaller organizations who may not have the same level of funding and budgets. And lastly, you know, in the world we live in today, there is a negative unemployment for talented cybersecurity people. And the ability to find, employ and retain such talent is extremely difficult. So this is going to become a bigger and bigger challenge over time. To address all these challenges that I just mentioned, one strategy is to have built-in security. When I say built-in security, it means that security is planned, designed and built into the platforms that we use. Some of these platforms are, for instance, the endpoints, uh, the email systems that you use on a daily basis. Let me illustrate this by using an example on the endpoints, which are your laptops and PCs. Traditionally, if we wanted to secure the laptops and PCs, we needed to install additional anti-malware firewalls, as well as whitelisting software on top of the operating system. This has a couple of problems. It bloats up the operating system, increases the number of agents that you have to install, and over time you have to patch all this additional software as well. So there is actually a management and administrative burden. If you have built-in security, meaning all these technologies are built into the operating system, then you won't have to deal with additional agents or memory being chewed up by all the agents and you don't have to patch them separately. So all this reduces the management burden at the endpoints and you need lesser people to manage all this additional software and it just makes security management a lot easier on the platform itself. As threats increase, threat intelligence increases as well. So we are starting to get more and more information coming from security devices. And all this data that we collect, we need to analyze them to look for abnormal behavior, which indicates a potential compromise or an attack. But because the volume is so great, sometimes it's extremely difficult to detect any kind of abnormal trends. So machine learning is actually used in situations like this. Machine learning is basically the ability of computers to be able you know, detect patterns and learn by themselves without explicitly programming them to do so. 
So this is actually a very, very powerful tool that can be used to derive abnormal patterns from large data sets and determine whether there's actually abnormal behavior happening. An example would be on login access and identity management. If you have a large organization with thousands of employees, you have, you'll be having thousands of logins and logouts every single day. So how do you detect if one of these login accesses is actually the result of a credential theft exercise? So imagine if I logged in from Singapore now, and an hour later I logged in through my London office as well, that's actually abnormal behavior. But because there's so much data being collected, how can the system flag this out? So this is actually the strength of a machine learning algorithm that can detect such an abnormal behavior. To be effective with detection, you need to be constantly monitoring for those threats that are directed at your organization. In order to do this, obviously you need to have a very, very good set of tools and probably uh, supported by some form of machine learning. In addition to that, some human expertise is also required because there's actually very little substitute for a very, very experienced cybersecurity person. But I've already mentioned there is a global shortage of very, very skilled cybersecurity people. So what do we do? A specific set of cybersecurity detection services are a potential solution to this problem. So such services actually come into two, two types. One of them is what we call reactive services. So in the event that you've been breached or you've been attacked and you can detect such an attack, then you put in the set of remediation services. The other set is a more proactive approach. This is actually a proactive exercise where you do a deliberate hunting exercise in the organization, irrespective of whether there are any indications of a compromise or an attack. This means that it is preventative in nature. This is like a health check on your security posture. So it is not an exaggeration to say you know, that some of the exercises that Microsoft's incident response team have conducted have actually uncovered a threat or a compromise in organizations where they didn't even expect or didn't even know that they had such an attack going on. So this is actually a very, very important part of detection. I hope that the techniques and methods I've described are going to be very useful for you to formulate your own threat detection strategies. In some of the bigger incidents that Microsoft has helped our customers to manage, we've found that the time from the attack happening to the time when it's actually discovered can run anything from days to weeks to months and sometimes even years. So the ability to detect threats in as short a time as possible, if not in real time, it's going to make a very big difference between that incident being a small one to one which is very catastrophic. So this is an area where all organizations should spend time and effort going into. In our next episode, we're going to look at the next step whereby we are looking at response and how organizations can remediate against a threat and compromise. So we're going to be sharing with you techniques and tricks around rapid response and it's going to be extremely important so i hope that everybody will be tuning in as well that's it for me this is eric lam thank you very much for watching